This is Jared Horak, and this is my second look at the 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic. Now, last week I took an early look at the Classic. In this video, now that the pre-entries have been drawn and there are 18 horses pre-entered for the Classic, I'll go through and I'll talk about each horse. And then in my final Breeders' Cup Classic video next week, after post positions are drawn and the morning line odds come out, I'll go through the field and I'll give out my top choice. If you're interested in my annual two-day Breeders' Cup full cards, the Breeders' Cup at Santa Anita this year, you will find those full cards at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page, Breeders' Cup Week, Breeders' Cup November 3rd and 4th. And I've had a lot of success over the years at Santa Anita Park. I cover Southern California full cards every day, and I covered the Breeders' Cup for many years as well. Uh, so hopefully with the Breeders' Cup at Santa Anita Park, a, a track that I know very well, hopefully I'm going to have a very productive and profitable 2023 Breeders' Cup. So head on over to the runawayhorse.com on my sales page for more details. If you're interested in reading all of my 2023 Breeders' Cup handicapping articles, you can read those articles at todaysracingdigest.com in their Breeders' Sec Breeders' Cup section. So go over to todaysracingdigest.com on their front page at the top left. You'll see a Breeders' Cup tab. Click on that. All of my handicapping articles will show up there. I've written articles for all 14 Breeders' Cup races, handicapping angles for all of those races. I did a five-part series, Breeders' Cup Sires. I did jockeys, trainers, and horses to watch. And I'm going to be covering more articles at todaysracingdigest.com for the Breeders' Cup as we get closer uh, to the Breeders' Cup on November 3rd and 4th. So again, head on over to Today's Racing Digest and check out their Breeders' Cup section uh, to read those articles. And in, in the description in this video, I'll provide links to those handicapping articles as well. And if you're interested in purchasing the complete digest for Santa Anita Park for both Breeders' Cup days, you'll find that product, that annual product as well, at todaysracingdigest.com. Um, on their Santa Anita Park sales page. So you'll be able to find that there. And they've been covering uh, Southern California racing. That's their specialty. And they've been covering that since 1970. So they've had a lot of success and they know a lot about Southern California racing. And with the Breeders' Cup there, I think they're going to probably have a very good year uh, for the Breeders' Cup. Uh, so that a complete digest will include past performances, analysis, and wagering strategies. And you will find that Breeders' Cup week at todaysracingdigest.com. Now let's get through and look at the Breeders' Cup um, pre-entries. And the Breeders' Cup is going to be the ninth race. The Breeders' Cup Classic will be the ninth race at Santa Anita Park. Saturday, November 4th, 2023, uh, the grade one $6 million Breeders' Cup Classic for three-year-olds and up, a mile and a quarter on the main track. Scheduled post time is for 6.40 p.m. Eastern. And in alphabetical order, I'll go through. And Arabian Night is the first horse I'll talk about. This is the son of Uncle Mo. And Uncle Mo was one of the Breeders' Cup sires that I covered uh, in my uh, Breeders' Cup sires uh, five-part series at Today's Racing Digest. And you can read about him over there. And for uh, this horse, he's only run four times. He has three wins and a third-place finish. And he's one for one at a mile and a quarter, grade one winner at a mile and a quarter. Uh, now, uh, some some good angles uh, uh, for for this horse. Well, he's lightly raced. He's got good early pressing speed, and he should be all over the pace, and his best races should be in front of him. Seven furlong debut on the Breeders' Cup undercard last year. He romped by seven. Southwest Stakes was his second start, Oakland Park in the slop, and he romped there, setting the pace. Uh, they took him off the Kentucky Derby Trail, brought him back for the Haskell Stakes, and he ended up battling with a long shot there on, on a quick pace. And then he had the lead, but he couldn't hold it. But after Go Rocket Ride and Mage went past him, he could have quit, but he didn't. He kept digging in, and he was actually coming back at those rivals at the end. He was the beaten favorite there. He's been the favorite in all four of his starts. But that was his first start since January. So from January to July, that was a long layoff. Then he came back in the Pacific Classic last time out as my top choice. He was able from post eight uh, to get out there and set a pressured pace. Um, slow down Andy came after him and actually went in front of him but then Arabian Knight was able to come back and take the lead again and then hold off go rocket ride and win by a neck. Flavia Pratt was aboard for that nice victory last time out for trainer Bob Baffert. They paid 2.3 million for the son of Uncle Mo and he's one that has a lot of upside, good speed, uh, best races in front of him and he's certainly going to be a solid win contender for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Archangelo, another solid win contender for trainer Jenna Antonucci. This is a son of Arrogate. Six starts with four wins in a second, and he continues to improve. So he's lightly raced. He's a three-year-old, and he's on the improve. So, so both of these three-year-olds, 
We just talked about Arabian Knight and now Archangelo. They're both solid win contenders. Archangelo has good tactical speed, and he's won his last four starts. Broke his maiden, third time out, one turn mile at Gulfstream Park. And then in his next start in the Peter Pan, he got in a real battle with Bishop's Bay, and he was able to outfinish that one by a head. And then in his next start in the Belmont Stakes, he set a great inside trip that day. Saved all the ground, got the jump on the closers, and he was able to win by a length and a half. Now, he did open up a three and a half length lead. So his big key to success in that race and then in the Traverse, in which he basically duplicated his Belmont, saved ground, moved out, took over, and won by a length. So in both of those races, overmatched front runners, and Archangelo was able to get the jump on the closers and open up and then hold on late and hold off those late runners. He did that in the Belmont. He did that in the Travers. Forte was coming after him in the Belmont, and then in the Travers, it was disarmed. But he was able to win both of those races. So I think they want to try to do the same. I think an inner post would help him. He would be able to save ground, try to get the jump on the closers again. A bright future for trainer Todd Pletcher. This is a son of Curlin. Seven starts, four wins, and two third-place finishes, and he's really come into his own in his last couple starts at Saratoga at a mile and an eighth in an optional claiming race. He pressed from second. He took over when he won by more than four, stepped up grade one Jockey Club Gold Cup at a mile and a quarter, stalked from second, took the lead, opened up a two-and-a-half lead, then held off proxy by a news. He's improving, but he's going to have to continue to improve uh, to beat a field like this. Charge it for Todd Pletcher. He's an erratic son of Tappet. Uh, you just don't know what you're going to get from him. He's got a lot of raw ability, uh, but he doesn't always show up and run his best race. 12 starts, 4 wins, 3 runner-up finishes. He can put up big efforts like he did in the Dwyer when he won by 23 lengths last year. Uh, and then he won. And he looked good in an optional claiming race in his first start this year. The Gulfstream Park Mile, heavy favorite. He disappointed there. Pressing from second, taking a short lead, and then ending, ending up finishing second behind Gulfstream Park specialist endorsed. In his next start in the Oaklawn Handicap, he was a disappointing fifth. He was fourth in the Met Mile. Then he bounced back in the Suburban, prominent throughout victory in that mile and a quarter race. Then in his last two starts, the Whitney and the Woodward, fourth by 10. And then he was fourth again, beaten more than five lengths last time behind Zandon. Uh, so you just don't know what you're going to get from Charge It. Don't trust him. Clapton is uh, the next one in alphabetical order. This is a son of Brethren. He's a Florida bred. He's six for 24. Good overachieving horse. Moved to the Chad Summers barn for his last couple starts. Jockey Club Gold Cup. He was fourth. The grade two Lucas Classic at a mile and an eighth. He rallied from 10 lanes back to win that one. Uh, so he's one that's probably outclassed in here. Derma Sotagake is next. And he's one that hasn't run since the Kentucky Derby. He looked outstanding in the UAE Derby over the winter. Then in the Kentucky Derby, he ran an okay race. From post 14, he was able to rally from a, a 14th place in that 18-horse field to finish sixth. It did set up for closers. He was one that wanted to be up on the pace, but he wasn't quick enough early to keep up. And then he was able to pass some horses. Not a bad effort. I think this is a tall task, his first start since May. Dreamlike for Todd Pletcher, a son of Gunrunner. And Gunrunner was another horse that I covered in my Breeders' Cup Sires article series. And for this horse, he's just one for six lifetimes, so he's eligible for an entry-level allowance race. He was a good second behind Saudi Crown in the Pennsylvania Derby last time out. He's always been highly regarded. As a maiden, he was a close third in the Grade 2 Wood Memorial. And then he broke his maiden when they dropped him back in the maiden company in his next start. And then an optional um, entry-level allowance race, he disappointed. Took blinkers off last time out in that Pennsylvania Derby, and he rallied nicely. He's probably up against it in here. He's one that maybe next year he could turn into a decent type. Uh, go Rocket Ride for trainer Richard Mandela, this son of Candy Ride. Five starts, three wins in two seconds. So he's another one of those lightly raced three-year-olds that has a lot of upside, and he's got good stalking speed. Six furlong debut, he went wire to wire. San Felipe stake, second time out. Now, they went from six furlong maiden winner uh, into a Kentucky Derby points race second time out. And he was the favorite, surprisingly, there. Practical move, a much more experienced horse was able to win that one. But not embarrassed at all, go Rocket Ride finishing second. And then uh, he was supposed to run in the Santa Anita Derby. He got sick. He missed that race. And they brought him back in the Affirm Stakes. And he stalked and he looked good winning that one as the one to two favorite. They shipped him to uh, Monmouth Park for the Haskell. And he sat a great trip there from the inside post 
Mike Smith was able to steer him out into the clear, stalking the pace, and that pace was quick, and he got to jump on closers uh, like Mage, and he was able to win that one by a length in three quarters. In the Pacific Classic, Arabian Knight turned the tables on him, um, and in that race, Arabian Knight was able to get out there and control the pace, whereas opposed uh, to the Haskell, where Arabian Knight uh, was uh, battling on a fast pace. So Arabian Knight was in a more controlled uh, situation last time, and he was able to, to hold off Go Rocket Ride. Again, he had the inside post, and he stalked inside, and he missed by a neck. Richard Mandela has had a lot of success in the Breeders' Cup uh, when it's held at Santa Anita Park, and this horse is probably sitting on a decent effort, and he should work out a good trip. King of Steel, he was shipping in from overseas, and he's also entered in the Breeders' Cup turf. That's probably the race they're going to go in. And in the champion stakes on October 21st, that grade one race under Frankie DeTori, he was able to win at three to one odds on soft turf. So he's never run on dirt if they did try it. Uh, obviously a grade one winner uh, overseas. He's a, He's got some class to him, but I think that probably oh, the, that Breeders' Cup turf is a better spot. He is a graded winner at a mile and a half on turf. Mage. He's just one for six in the stakes ranks, but he really made that victory count because that victory is in the Kentucky Derby and his lone stakes win there after finishing fourth in the Fountain of Youth and second in the Florida Derby, both behind Forte. And then in the Kentucky Derby, he was the best closer. You just knew a closer was going to win that one because the pace fell apart and he was the best closer that day and he rallied from 16th place and he got a great closing trip under Javier Castellano to win by a length. Preakness stakes, he got absolutely no pace help. National Treasure stole that one over Blazing Sevens, a stalker, and Mage was able to stalk the pace and finish best of the rest in third. The Haskell Stakes, a decent effort rallying from sixth, finishing one and three-quarter lengths behind Go Rocket Ride. He got even with that one, but then he couldn't go past, and Go Rocket Ride has something left. He did finish in front of Arabian Night that day, but then in the Traverse Stakes, uh, he never picked up his feet. He ran last. It was a, a below par effort. Archangelo won that one. Disarm was second. Uh, Tapatrice was third. And then Forte was fourth. And Mage just was last. So he's one that he needs a, a pace meltdown. And he's only one for six in the stakes ranks. And I just don't trust him to run back to that race. He would just need uh, everything to go his way from off the pace. But on the minor ward, I wouldn't be shocked if he hit the board. Missed the cut for trainer John Sadler quality road coat here and he's five for 11 with the runner-up finish probably won't end up in this race um some others are going to be more highly um, ahead of him on the entry list and he probably won't get in uh, but he did romp in the tokyo city a grade three at a mile and a half at santa anita last time uh so he's one that going to be cutting back in distance that was his first win in four starts in this country he had some success uh, overseas before that um, probably up against it if he does uh, end up running in the race. Proxy for trainer Mike Stidham, the son of Tappet, and he's the 12th horse um, in alphabetical order. Uh, six for 19 with seven runner-up finishes, two show finishes. He's banked more than $2 million. He is 0 for 3 with two second-place finishes at a mile and a quarter. And then um, at Santa Anita, he's run once. He was in the big cap, and he was second beaten a neck. And then he won the Oakland handicap after that. He was eighth in the Stephen Foster Grade 3 Monmouth Cup, he he was just the class of the field there, and he won that one easily as the heavy favorite in the Jockey Club Gold Cup last time out. He was surging, coming to bright future, but he couldn't quite get there, and he missed by a nose. So Proxy, solid horse, but I just don't think that he's going to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. Saudi Crown is one that can impact the pace. Now, Arabian Knight is definitely going to be on the pace for Bob Baffert. Saudi Crown is one that can impact the pace for trainer Brad Cox. This always dreaming colt is another lightly raced three-year-old with some upside. He won his first two starts at six furlongs, April 16th and May 21st. The grade three Dwyer, Fort Bragg, a more experienced horse, finished in nose in front of him that day. And he was 11, those two were 11 lanes clear of the rest. The grade two Jim Dandy, he missed by a nose. That was a controversial race where I read Ortiz Jr. bullied his way through horses and was able to just win by a nose, but Saudi Crown was getting tired there and uh, drifting, which caused some of those issues in that race. But then in the Pennsylvania Derby, in the slop, just like the Jim Dandy in the slop, he was able to get out there, set the pace, control the pace, and hold on by a half length over Dreamlike, and they were six lanes clear of Il Miracolo in the third spot in that 11-horse field. 
So back-to-back -back solid efforts on wet tracks. He set the pace in four of his five starts. So he should be all over the pace, but he has not won at a mile and a quarter. He hasn't even run at a mile and a quarter. Like the last horse to win the Breeders' Cup Classic with no mile and a quarter experience. Uh, I believe that was Nick's go. Uh, so typically this race is won by horses that have proven form at a mile and a quarter. And he's one that I would think that he would have to get out there and control the pace if he was going to win the Classic. And uh, with a horse like Arabian Knight in there, I don't see how he's going to get out there and control the pace. Uh, Senior Buscador, I think you can use him underneath. He's 6 for 14 with two show finishes. He's really elevated his game, his big victory this year, the grade 2 San Diego at Del Mar, where he rallied from 11 lanes back uh, to win over Slow Down Andy. And then in the Pacific Classic, he rallied from 10th place and last, and he rallied wide, and he finished 4th. He was a length behind Slow Down Andy from, for 3rd there. Arabian Night and Go Rocket Ride were 1-2. The grade one awesome again on a wet fast track last time. Again, he rallied from the back of the pack and he ended up finishing third. So if you're playing bets like the trifecta and the superfecta, I think a horse like Senior Buscador can pass some tired horses and possibly hit the board. Skippy Longstocking for Safi Joseph Jr. He exits a romping victory in the Charlestown Classic, but I think this is a big step up in class. That bull ring track at Charlestown, it was a wet fast track. He was able to get out there and control the pace. He's not going to control the pace in here, but he's not a need-to-lead type. He's more of a stalking type. And I would expect that if he does uh, make it into the body of the field, he'll probably stalk the pace. But he is 0 for 2 at this mile and a quarter distance. Ushba Tesoro is the next. And this horse from Japan is 10 for 30. And he does have a nice uh, victory of coming off of a layoff from March to September. Uh, in Japan last time out, 11 horse field, he was able to win that one by two and a half lengths. And that was a good effort. And he's won uh, multiple races in a row now. I think he's won his last six starts. So he's three for three this year. He was four for eight last year. So he's been on a nice roll. He handles a mile and a quarter distance. And I wouldn't be shocked. Some We've seen these uh, horses from Japan do well in the Breeders' Cup um, and, in, and all over the world. They've done well in international races. And I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, if this horse who won the Dubai World Cup in March uh, would be competitive uh, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. A white Abario for trainer Rick Dutro. Uh, this one is a race day four-year-old colt, and he's six for 14 with a second and three-thirds. He was one that he always did his best race at Gulfstream Park when he was with trainer Safi Joseph Jr. All of his wins were at Gulfstream, and then we, when he was away from Gulfstream, he just didn't run the same quality race. And then he moved to the Rick Dutro barn for the Met Mile, ended up finishing third behind Cody's Wish and Zandon. And then last time out in the Whitney, he was able uh, to finish in front of Zandon, and he just had a great trip there. Overmatched front runner, Giant Game was setting the pace, and White Abario was just perched in second, waiting for Giant Game uh, to give it up. And when he did, White Abario was suddenly well clear, and he was able to win with a big speed figure, winning by six lengths over Zandon and Cody's Wish. And that was a, a big effort there at 10 to 1. And now can he do the same thing at a mile and a quarter? Mile and a quarter, he's run one time in the Kentucky Derby. He was 16th in 2022. Uh, so he's got some things to still prove. He's got to prove that that race was for real. Can he sit this same kind of trip here? Uh, if a horse, horse is like Arabian Knight or out there in Saudi Crown, they're not going to give up like Giant Game did. He's just not going to be able to get that same kind of trip. He's going to have to gut it out and hold off some closers. And I'm not sure he's going to be able to do that. We'll have to see if he can. Zandon, 18th and final pre-entrant for the 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic. This son of upstart, so consistent. 13 starts, 6 wins, 3 seconds, and 3 thirds. The only time he's ever finished out of the money, he was 4th as the beaten favorite in the Cigar Mile late last year. He's just always right there in the Bluegrass Stakes. He won that grade 1 uh, in April of 2022. In the Kentucky Derby, he was third. He was uh, second in the Jim Dandy. He was third in the Travers, uh, third, uh, second in the Pennsylvania Derby, and then he ran in the Cigar Mile. That was his final start last year. And then this year, the Met Mile, he was second. Uh, the Westchester, Met Mile, and Whitney, he finished second in all three of those races. Um, uh, two of them at one mile, and then the Whitney at a mile and an eighth. And then last time out, the Great Two Woodward, uh, even money favorite, he just outclassed that field, and he was able to win easily by four lengths under Flavian Pratt. So he's won uh, for trainer Chad Brown. I think if you're 
if you're playing any kind of exotics, you, you have to use him. He's just so consistent, and he can close, he can stalk, and Zandon is a horse that's sharp, and he has that um, uh, confidence-boosting victory under his belt now. So Zandon is definitely a horse uh, that handles the mile and a quarter distance, two starts with two thir- two-thirds. He's sharp. He finishes in the top three almost every time, and you have to consider him a top three threat in that 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic. So that's my early uh, look at all of the horses that are pre-entered in the Classic. Again, I'll be back next week after post positions are drawn, go through the field again. I uh, will know exactly where they're going to be breaking and maybe have a better idea of which horse between Arabian Night um, is going to be setting the pace or Saudi crown uh, based possibly on their post position draw. We'll have to see how all, that, how all that plays out. But then I'll go through the field and I'll give out my top choice in the 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic in my video next week. And keep checking my YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting more Breeders' Cup videos. I have an earlier Breeders' Cup Classic preview if you want to watch that one. I did a Breeders' Cup Friday preview. And I'm going to go through and do as many uh, Breeders' Cup uh, videos as I can. I'm going to do analysis on the road to the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks. Uh, Kentucky Oaks points race, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. I'm going to cover that one. And for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, a Kentucky Derby points race, I'm going to be covering that one as well next week. So lots of stuff coming up on my YouTube channel, lots of videos at todaysracingdigest.com, and my full cards and the complete digest, uh, which I mentioned earlier in this video. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. Mm-hmm.